Welcome back, Chiefs fans. This is RGR Football. I'm Ryan. This is me going rogue on your Kansas City Chiefs, how and when they get things done. And a lot has been made about this slow start, all the turnovers that they've gotten to. We're going to get into one of the reasons and the correction that I think is just a little bit too much effort to overcome, to make a great play, to just not take what is there to be had and pushing a little bit. Uh, make sure you like sub and hit the bell notification if you are new to the channel. And if you would leave a comment down below what you think of this play and what you think they ought to do about it. Now, this is not what is going to turn into a Patrick Mahomes bashing session. That is never going to be on the table, I will tell you that now. But one thing that can happen is we can talk about what he can do to maximize himself a little bit more and avoid some of these situations. This is a play from the very end uh, of the Chargers game uh, that did end in a turnover. And I just want to point out how and why it happened and why it could have been avoided. First and foremost, what you get here is the three by one, the classic with Travis over here, himself in a tight split. Patrick is, is going to tr attempt to come back to him and make this pass after he breaks the pocket. And, and you saw what the result was. But what I want to go over is how this comes to be. Now, there's a little bit of communication going on here with uh, McColl and DeMarcus. You have Tyreek here pretty much set up, and Travis is over here on his lonesome. He's got, I believe this is Michael Davis in here on tight coverage. It's going to be a four-man rush, and this is pretty much what they were doing a lot of the time. The linebacker here has, has a little, little chore I would say, with Clyde edwards Lair, who could break the pocket here in a little bit. But as we roll forward, I want to point out a few things as they get going. The protection, first and foremost, is pretty good. They do something I think that is key down here in setting up this play. And, and you'll see from the other angle as well, as it rolls forward, Joey Bosa gets chipped real hard here by Clyde edwards Lair. I mean, that's not a little thing. I know Clyde's working on his pass block, but getting underneath the arm here and knocking him back in, this is helping the Yang, and this is something that I felt like they needed to do a little bit more often. Now, the interesting thing is he he starts to get out. I would have liked him to see him get out a little bit quicker, and as Patrick's rolling here, he's trying to get him to go upfield, and he runs out of space because of the pursuit by Bosa himself as Bosa turns around. The problem is this didn't have to happen, and I'll tell you why it did happen. is Despite the block from Clyde Edwards-Alaire, what you saw up here is a good scheme and good affect on what the Chargers did to slow down the receivers. You can see as we start the snap, they all get off the ball, right? And Patrick is looking to this side of the field. Now, I don't think that this was designed to be uh, a ball to Tyreek because of the route that he's about to run. He is breaking out, and he's got his head turned around, but he's short of the sticks. That's not a pass that I think they're aiming to throw. And as you see here right now, this is the key that I want to show what's going on. Patrick is looking in this general direction. He's starting to come off. I probably took it two frames too far. He was very much looking this direction and is starting to look. He's checking the safeties right now. Is he getting a robber and a single high? Is this a double over the top of Travis and a floater over here where you see you have four defenders that are basically trying to take on these three wide receivers? He's trying to get an idea of it, and he doesn't like what he's seeing. He doesn't feel the need to go there, and he doesn't feel that he has the opportunity. And I can't say that I blame him. That's not an issue. I think that's the right decision, especially when you see here, these guys are all pretty covered. There's a cushion here that is going to get eaten up, but it's still not an open spot unless this was a stop on a dime for – I think this is McColl to stop and come back to the sticks and, and try to make that play. I don't think it's going to happen. But here's the important part, and I want you to notice from this wide screen view, is everybody has a back to Patrick except for those safeties. So from this hash over, there's only one guy that has even an inkling of what Patrick's doing in the secondary. So you have back in man. You have back turn in man. You have back turn in man. This is something that I think should have been and could have been taken advantage of because right now, right at this second, Patrick has all this space that is going to be open because no one's paying any attention to him. Can this safety come down from, you know, 25 yards? Sure. Will it happen? I don't think so. And so as we roll forward, we'll see that the chip has happened 
to Bosa. Bosa's back inside, and Yang's on him. Now, right now, on the backside, uh, <laughs> Orlando Brown has his man on the ground. He is pancaked. And this is the problem, is right here, when Patrick makes his decision, he stands it up, he decides he's not going to throw into this coverage, but he also decides that he's not going to exploit that side of the field, and that's something that he should have reconsidered. That's where this play should have gone. Because from right here, what he does is break the pocket to his right out of a pocket that set him up to go the opposite direction. And what that allows Bosa in particular to do is... After having Clyde help Nyang, Nyang's in a good position. He has Bosa at least beaten for another second or so. And by breaking the pocket to the right, it allows Bosa to just disengage and come chase him down. And that's exactly what happens. And as we see, Travis, when, when Mahomes actually starts running, Travis sees it, and he's going the opposite direction. And he turns and pivots and brings his route back. This is why... Patrick is starting to see this open up. Now, if he leads him over here, maybe he's got this guy's back to him. He can maybe deliver the ball right now and get something done, but he doesn't. And as it rolls forward, that hesitation in Travis getting the turn and not firing the ball out here where he could possibly run it down, it's allowed Bosa to catch up, and now Patrick's in trouble. And that's why he, he makes what is a bad pass. He leaves his feet. And it just isn't enough. It sails on him. I think there was wind involved here, but this is the reaction of, of what happens. You saw. And Travis, a lot of people complaining that Travis stopped his route. Well, so so what's here? If you're Travis Kelsey, you're running your route. You've got your man beat. If the ball's delivered right now, he's got the first down. And what he's recognized is that Patrick's breaking the pocket. He's turning around. He can't see him right here. So as he does get his head around and starts to get a look at him, he looks at Patrick, and Patrick looks like he's going to fire the ball right here and then hesitates. And so Kelsey's not sure if he's going to tuck it and then escape again back to the left like he could have the first time. There were multiple opportunities for Patrick to escape to the left with a lot of real estate in front of him, and that's part of the problem. So Travis lets up a little bit. I can't say that he quit on the route. I don't see that here. He's just confused as to he thought he was going to break it back, and he slows down and then realizes the ball is in play, and then obviously the result is what it is. Now, should he have kept running through the route? Yes. I mean, this is the lesson that they always tell McCole Hardman to continue to do that, and that's the reason why. Now, when we look at the backside uh, from the end zone cam, this is Travis over here, uh, obviously Clyde. And you look at the the girth of what this pass rush is going to be. That tells you something. And yes, there are three guys to the to the left side of the center, and that should be a concern. But as you watch it come forward, again, look at the, the stance from Orlando Brown. He's halfway opened up his hips already so that he is prepared for the wide edge. And I think Niang, his kick slide is, is better, so I don't think he had to do that. But he definitely gets help from Clyde. And as we roll it forward, what we see is, is that Clyde like lifts Bosa as well. And that really allows Nyang to get his leverage back down. He's into his body. He's lower. And I think that helps quite a bit. In the meantime, what we've seen on the other side is the twist. As they roll forward, engagement. Tooney gives a shove and actually knocks 99 half off so that uh, now Orlando has a good shot at it. And Tooney comes right back off and picks up the blitzer. The twist is on and he's happy with this. And he's got him under control right here. Now this is is the important part right here. When Patrick has his back foot coming down and he decides to break it when he has a pocket that is not only for the most part clean at this point, you're going to see this guy move a little bit, but with his athleticism, he can cut up here and probably get away with it. He can definitely with this man on the ground, he can cut outside and run for the first down without a problem. He would get to the sideline as well and stop the clock. This is a situation where time is of the essence as well, so we have to remember that. But his tendency, he's trying to look for his number one receiver in Travis Kelsey. He understands that he's got this pressure, and Clyde's done his job and helped here. So don't run out and negate that work that's been done. This pocket is pretty solid, and you'll see here, as Patrick leaves the pocket, what we see is... Tooney could have had a little bit more trouble 
42. I think that's what I'm saying. Right here, as Nelson tries to shuck him, right, he could have gone back to the outside. But Joe's in, in play here. He he recovers. He's got his wide base. He will recover and make that block. So this right here, especially as Orlando puts his guy all the way on his knees, if Patrick breaks this to the opposite side, he has a first down and lives to fight another day and doesn't have to push this particular play with a bad route combination and breaking away from where all of his receivers are going. Travis is coming this way. Every other receiver is over here except for Clyde Edwards-Alaire, who has now not been able to outrun his coverage because of the chip. We'll go back to the uh, wider view and take a look at it. And as that comes down, you can see it's the chip delay that, that keeps Clyde from accelerating out. Like, if he gets that knock into to Bosa – and doesn't lean back. If he actually delivers and knocks Bosa off, very hard for a guy his size. This is the problem with, with undersized backs. Now he's a little bit delayed, and so the advantage that he has has not allowed him to break this coverage. Now he's in blocking mode because he thinks Patrick's going to tuck it and run as well. So the problem being is that now your one option here in front of you, your safety valve, is negated. And as we see right here until – when, when he breaks the pocket, Travis is going this way. Tyreek is going that way. These guys are well outside the numbers. And kudos to Demarcus Robinson because up here, he is the one guy that sees Patrick break the pocket. And yes, he was on a deep dig, but he continues and he runs hard through it to try to give his quarterback another option. You see that Tyreek gets turned around and expects the ball is either gone or Patrick's running. He's He's not trying to get open any longer. Neither is McCole Hardman. So this is a problem of a lack of targets at this point. But again, the bottom line comes down to if Patrick Mahomes doesn't like what he sees here with the safety coverage, but he has three backs turned to him, as this defender goes down, this alley should have been the first down right here without a problem. I don't think the way that these guys are running – Tyreek would have drug his man out of bounds. Uh, I think DeMarcus would have cut well past the boundary. I think Patrick would have had no problem getting this first down. But he bailed to the side where his best target is, his number one target, Travis Kelsey, is. And unfortunately, with the cross flow, he had to wait for Travis to come back, and that's where things got hairy. So this is just a lesson in, in decision-making. I'm sure he and the coaching staff have gone over this ad nauseum at this point. But these are the little things about not just doing what you think will get you out to make a play, but doing what's smart for the play in this situation. And I think Patrick will put that together. I think he will make the adjustment and live to fight another day. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think. Can he do it? Can he settle down and take what's there and not necessarily force things, especially when he doesn't have open runners deep? That's going to be the problem. So thank you for watching this one. I hope that you enjoy that. Make sure you like, sub, and hit the bell notification. I hope that you guys are ready. We're going to have more for you. Uh, a couple of keys with Matt. Dan's going to have something. We have some videos for you over the weekend as we get ready for the Chiefs matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles. Thanks for watching this one, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more, and subscribe to RGR Football.